Today I'm disassembling an old ball mouse. Yes, the very same one that still had a ball. Let's see how it works and clean it. First, unscrew the bottom screw. The ball is the main component of this type of mouse. Just look at how much dirt is in this mouse. There are two rollers here, the X axis and the Y axis. They spin from a ball and rotate these slotted discs. Race from the air outlet, pass through them to the photo sensors. When the strips blocks the light, the mouse detects movement. Now let's clean them. Soft dust usually accumulates on the axis blocking rotation. I simply remove it with tweezers and then clean it with a napkin. The mouse wheel isn't in much better shape either. It will need cleaning. However, I will say that it's very soft to the touch. I thoroughly spray the entire body with rubbing alcohol, then clean it with a napkin and set it aside to dry so it doesn't get in the way. I assemble all the parts on a napkin and then spray them. I thoroughly clean each component, especially the ball, as it needs to be completely smooth. Each pin on this board has its own meaning and it differs from the USB. For example, on this mouse, we see that the pin 1 is a clock. This pin doesn't exist on USB mouse. Therefore, pins 2, 3, 4 and 5 are data, ground, plus 5 volts and the button. On USB mouse, pins 1, 2, 3 and 4 respectively are plus 5 volts, data minus, data plus and a ground. For clearly, let's look at a simple laser mouse that can be connected to USB. Next, connect this wire to the computer and use multimeter to find the plus and minus terminals. The right wire is a plus 5 volts and the blue wire is a ground. To find the plus and minus terminals on the mouse bar, we need to find these pins of the capacitor going to the negative and positive terminals. We connect the mouse and see this error. Even in device manager, we see that the computer isn't recognizing this device. Next, solder the PS2 cable to the board and connect it to the computer. Carefully solder each wire according to the diagram I drew earlier. We don't need pin 5. Connect it and it works. Now I'll show you how it reads movement using optical sensors. There are two elements on the edge, an infrared LED and photo detector. Light passes through the slits, creating the same pulsation of light. One is responsible for the movement in the X direction, the other for Y. To understand not only the speed, but also the direction, there are two sensors, A and B. They are slightly offset. When the disc rotates, they receive signals from the same slit at different times. If A is triggered first, then B, it means movements to the right. If you look at all this, as the disc rotates to the left, sensor B is triggered first, then sensor A. As we can see, B has a delayed signal. Therefore, when a signal is present, it's 1. And when there is no signal, it's 0. To understand this further, let's look at the LED side. When the disc rotates, we first see sensor A, then sensor B. Now let's compare the two. When rotating the disc to the right, the mouse cursor moves to the right. And when rotating to the left, the mouse cursor moves to the left. The signal then passes through the controller, is processed, and send it to the computer. Now we put all the parts back in place, starting with the mouse wheel. After cleaning it looks perfect. And let's check that all buttons are pressed. Next we put the X and Y axis back in place. On the screen we see that the cursor moves left and right, respectively when rotating. They should rotate freely as a mouse can lag. After the spring we assemble the upper case. I'll say that it was a challenge, like solving another puzzle. We close the case and tighten the screws. We put the ball back and close the lid. Done. Look, the mouse moves perfectly again. No jerking, no slipping. In the 19s, cleaning your mouse every week was a master skill. If you like this content, please subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.